What's up YouTube? My name is Adam and this is Brokeman Finance. Today we are going to talk about a stock and a company that is a little bit controversial. Some people uh, some people don't like to invest in this company because of how they feel morally when it comes to the environment. I'm not saying that this is a sin stock, but a lot of people do feel a certain type of way about it. The company that I'm talking about is ExxonMobil. Since 2015, the energy sector has underperformed the market. ExxonMobil is down 47% year to date and nearly 70% since 2014 when it hit its peak. Oil prices have declined 32% year to date, while the Energy Select Sector SPDR Fund, ticker symbol XLE, which tracks the energy sector, is down almost 50%. Since the Roni Roni came sweeping through back in March, it turned the already downtrodden oil industry even more onto its head. Then, to make matters worse, ExxonMobil just got kicked out of the Dow Jones. But this is the thing. Investors make the biggest returns, they make the biggest gains on their money when they invest into a company, a, a still a strong company, whenever they are beaten down and Exxon is, has gotten their ass whipped. In fact, just today, they had even more bad news come out regarding leaked documents reg about their emissions plans, and uh, it's not good. ExxonMobil is the largest direct descendant of John D. Rockefeller Standard Oil, which was formed in 1870. Let me repeat that formed in 1870, and it still remains one of the biggest revenue earning companies in the world. That's 150 years, by the way. Math. In 1911, an antitrust ruling broke up Standard Oil into 34 companies, including what would eventually become Mobil and Exxon in 1966 and 1972. Exxon and Mobil were two separate companies until they merged together in 1999. And since 1870, these companies have survived every downturn in the market. For me, it's always hard to bet against companies that have so much resilience. That's why that's always one of my favorite words right there, grit. That matters more than anything. Made up of hustle, passion, and perseverance. Hence the key word, perseverance. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. The world is becoming less and less dependent on oil and gasoline. That's true. A lot of people think that this market is almost like the tobacco market. It's just a dying industry and eventually, eventually is going to get phased out. In fact, California already announced that they would not sell any more new gasoline powered vehicles by 2035. But I still find it hard to believe that Exxon, who has survived 150 years, is going to become the blockbuster of the energy sector. Darren Woods, the ExxonMobil CEO, had this to say. Rony Rony has significantly impacted near-term demand. He really didn't say Rony Rony, but yeah. Resulting in oversupplied markets and unprecedented pressure on commodity prices and margins. Economic activity will return and populations and standards of living will increase, which will in turn drive demand for our products and a recovery of the industry. You don't simply survive 150 years with all the depressions and market adjustments and corrections without having the ability to adapt and overcome. But first, if you don't mind helping us adapt and overcome by smashing that like button and remembering to subscribe. Exxon has been in the news mostly as of late because of that massive 10% dividend. For a company that has been struggling with losses, the dividend continues to come into question whether they can maintain it or will it get cut. When a company decides to cut its dividend, typically it's not a good sign that the company is in very good financial shape. And we have certainly had our share of cut dividends in 2020. But when this happens, you will see investors sell off, cut ties with the company, and bail out because it's usually not a good sign. Especially if you're a company known now more for a dividend than you are for growth, such as AT&T, Coca-Cola, and now Exxon. But the problem is whenever that dividend is cut, that share price begins to tumble downward. And at 10%, Exxon is, there's no doubt they are now known more for that dividend than they are for growth and capital gains. The problem for Exxon is, 
if they cut that dividend, they know they're going to lose a lot of investors. A lot of these people depend on dividends for their income. But if they don't cut it, how long can they keep on paying? From a long-term perspective, and I know people hate to hear it, but cutting that dividend may just be the best option. They could take that much needed cash and put it towards debt, put it towards keeping their employees, put it towards research and development, whatever. Or if I was in the CEO role right now, I would probably look at a compromise of both. On the one hand, you can cut the dividend completely and lose some investors, or you could keep on paying out this high dividend and eventually you're gonna run out of money and probably go chapter 11, or cut the dividend in half, giving you a 5% dividend yield, but it should keep a lot of your dividend investors somewhat happy. And at the same time, you're gonna save an enormous amount of cash to start doing other things with, like saving your company. I'm not the only one who thinks this. Boris Schlossberg, Managing Director of FX Strategy at BK Asset Management, told CNBC's Trading Nation, I think the energy sector at this point actually presents a pretty decent value, especially because right now from a financial point of view, there's a sort of a game of chicken going on as far as dividends go. Now, if they do cut their dividends, let's say they even cut it by half, that still makes it a very attractive yield and at the same time also lowers their cash flow needs and therefore I think is a chance for the stock value to go up. Personally, I wouldn't mind seeing a complete dividend cut, get rid of it all for right now, focus on growing the company, get those capital gains back. I'd rather see that share price tick up than that dividend tick up. But I'm hoping I live long enough to see this company come surging back. But I can't understand the concern, especially from seniors that don't have 30, 40 more years to live, that, that, and that also that really count on those dividends as a major part of their income. If you're a long-term holder, this is one of the great opportunities where you have a chance to buy a very, very beaten down sector relatively cheaply for the immediate term, even though very, very long term. Now, this time last year, ExxonMobil was trading for around $68 a share. As of today, they are trading for around $33.45 at the time of this filming, more than a 50% drop off. However, they are still holding a fair value of $74. Investors have had to suffer through and watch this share price just keep tumbling, tumbling, tumbling and falling all year long. And now they're talking about cutting that massive, massive dividend, which can be good, but still it's going to freak some people out and that share price is likely going to continue to fall. But how low of a share price does this thing have to get to until it becomes a buy or even a strong buy? Remember what I said earlier, the best investment returns comes from when a company is beaten down. They are one of the world's oldest and largest companies. If anybody can survive this and come out on top, it's ExxonMobil. At $33, investors should really start looking at this and just kind of keeping their eye on it unless they're ready to pull the trigger now. But if this thing gets into the 20s, and I'm saying even if it's 29, if Exxon gets into the 20s, I think it becomes a buy. I, but only for long-term investors. This thing could go two, three, four years until it gets out of the slump that they're in. But in the 20s, in the 20s, for ExxonMobil, that is a that is such a low, low entry point for this company if you're not already in. If you're already in, I would take this opportunity to go ahead and start averaging down. But again, only if you're looking for a long term position. Boris also agrees with me on this point too, or maybe I agree with him. Those dividends are really great right now. Even if they do end up cutting those dividends, you could see a flush. I think that flush would be a buying opportunity. So I've begun to allocate in the space and I think there's good value there over the long run. What do you think is a good entry point for uh, investing in this company or is there one? Would you invest in it now? Would you invest or would you not invest in this company if it was a dollar a share? Let me know what you uh, think in the, in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinion. As always, stay safe and take care.